How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today we're going to get started on rebuilding a cylinder for our exchange fleet. So this is off a Hitachi ZX470 excavator. It is actually the dipper arm cylinder. So it connects from the boom and then controls the dipper arm. So we were really lucky to get our hands on this. These are off a newer series excavator and there are still a lot of them around. And these are quite a high turnover part so it will be good to get one of these refurbished and put on the shelf for one of our customers. But rebuild components generally need a lot of work and this cylinder is no exception. So what I know about this, it has done about 8,000 hours on the machine. The customer did take it off in order to get it resealed. They tried to disassemble it. They couldn't get the rod out of the barrel, which generally says that there's been an internal failure, something pretty serious. So what I'm expecting has happened is the piston and the barrel have contacted each other. They've started to make metal and they have jammed themselves together. Unfortunately, our customer couldn't wait for us to rebuild this and we didn't have any in stock, so they purchased it from another supplier. We bought this cylinder off them to rebuild it and put it into our exchange fleet. So we're gonna be looking at rebarrel, a new piston, potentially repairing the gland, and I don't believe the rod's gonna be in bad shape, but we're not gonna know until we get this thing apart. That's if we can get it apart because someone else tried to do it and they couldn't pull it apart. Righto, so I have split the gland away from the head flange and I can see down inside there, it does look pretty messy, like things have been extremely hot. So I don't wanna pull the gland out with the rod just yet. I need to keep it in place because it is the only thing holding the barrel and the rod in alignment. If I was to pull it out, it might, this, the rod might sag down a little bit, which would cause the piston to pinch in the barrel. We'll give it the best chance we can to get it out by keeping everything in alignment. What I'm gonna do is put one bolt back through the gland into the head flange to hold it in place, and then I'm gonna attach the eye to the forklift and just pull it out a little bit, and then I can attach the crane to it and try and pull the rod completely out of the barrel.
Right, so I did manage to get the rod to move about 500 mil, but it has now stopped and the press doesn't have enough physical weight for me to pull on this any harder. So I'm gonna take it out of the press, go and tie it to something really heavy, and we're gonna try and drag the rod the rest of the way out. Right, so we managed to get the rod free of the barrel. Now that everything's open, we can sort of see what's going on inside. It looks like the seals are not genuine and they have been coming apart for quite a long time. One of those seals is really deformed. It looks like it would have taken pressure from the bottom side. 
but none of the other seals behind it are damaged so I'd say that was during the assembly process. They've pinched the seal and simply pushed the rod home and no one's caught it. And I also found a few bits of material, that is the barrel and the piston. So we're going to get it put on a pallet, take it inside and have a closer look at it. So I've taken a quick look inside the barrel. The scoring is from one end all the way to the other and it is extremely deep. There is no way we're gonna hone this back and be able to use it. So this is gonna need a rebarrel. But we'll put this one aside and we'll get the rod apart. So now we can see the extent of the damage on the piston. We do have damage in two areas. One is far worse than the other. It looks to me that the seals have worn out and the piston has contacted the barrel and then it just starts to make metal from there. It is one of those things that is quite common for dipper arm cylinders because the cylinder spends the majority of its life horizontally. There is a lot of weight pushing down on them and the seals do wear out quite quickly. So I don't know when this was resealed last, but genuine parts weren't put back in it. These are aftermarket and they have started to break down. Cylinder Cylinders aren't a forever thing. Like everything on a machine, they do need servicing. Just because cylinders are not leaking doesn't mean they don't need to be rebuilt or need some attention. This cylinder wasn't actually leaking. The customer did notice a sound coming out of the cylinder while they were cycling the dipper arm. One of the other big problems is a lot of customers don't go through the process of their oil sampling and sending that back to the manufacturer so they can then test the sample. Hitachi would have known it was a hydraulic part that was failing. Obviously this customer doesn't do that, otherwise they would have picked this up early and the cylinder wouldn't have got this bad. So not only does it need a new barrel, but it is going to need a new piston as well. Next thing I'm gonna do is get the rest of this disassembled. So the way the grub screw works, it actually pushes a little ball into the rod and stops it from undoing itself. Once they do that up, they generally center pop the side of the grub screw so it can't undo itself and fall out into the barrel. So I do see my fair share of cases where people haven't undone the grub screw and removed the ball and they simply try to undo the nut and then it destroys the end of the rod and generally the nut at the same time. Now that we've got that undone, we're going to undo the nut. This is just me being hopeful. No. 
Righto, so the Stilsons didn't work. That was sort of being a little bit hopeful. I'm not going to go and push them because I will just end up breaking them. I would usually use a flogging spanner, but I did lend mine out to a guy I know and it never got returned. I am going to chuck it in the ute, take it over to a mate's place, and he's just going to crack the nut for me. Then we can bring it back and finish the disassembly. So now we've got the nut cracked, we can continue to disassemble the rod. So now with all those off, we're going to get the bush pressed out of the eye.
リさん So with the rod cleaned up, I can see there are no scratches, dints, or even chips in the chrome. It is in pretty good condition. It is quite dull in the working area because that is pretty standard. Now I'm going to use a micrometer in four or five different locations just to make sure the rod is still in spec. That's 129.99. Two underside. Point oh two. Hundred and thirty on button. When I mic cylinder rods, I always make sure that the rod is in the correct orientation as if it was mounted on the excavator or the dozer. And that is because of the way the cylinder works, it'll wear the top and the bottom of the rod out. So miking it in that orientation is going to pick up if there's anywhere in the working zone of the cylinder. So the rod should be 130 mil in diameter. In the working area of the rod, it is 129.98. So that is 0.02 of a mil undersized, which is well within spec. So overall, this cylinder rod's in pretty good shape. The eye is still in really really good condition, it hasn't got any cracks inside it and there is no excessive wear from the bush turning. The threads on the end are in good shape, the silicon bronze is still within spec, the chrome does look a little bit dull. So all I'm going to need to do is polish the chrome and we can reuse this rod in our cylinder. So the next thing I need to do, I need to do an inspection on the cylinder gland. Right, so I'm going to start by removing the O-ring and its backup ring. That seals the gland to the barrel. Then I'm going to remove the little locking wire that holds the bearing in place. Then I can turn the gland back over and do the rest of the work from the top. So that's the wiper seal removed. What this does is wipe all the dirt and the dust off the rod before it gets sucked back into the cylinder. So this is its only layer of protection from the outside elements. So there are a few ways that rods can be protected. There are shields that go over the cylinder rod and they are sort of like an accordion. They do work quite well, but they do trap a lot of dirt and debris inside them. And then you can't tell that the cylinder is leaking oil unless you actually pull it off and check it out. So they're generally more trouble than they're worth because they do stretch and they close up and they start to tear and then they fall apart anyway. So this is the backup ring for the U-cup. This sits on top of the U-cup seal and basically as it says, it backs it up so it can't invert itself or roll itself inside out. See that it's smeared? So that's the rod rubbing against the gland. So that is the U-cup seal. That is the main pressure seal from inside the cylinder. These will hold back about 3000 PSI while the machine is in operation. As the hydraulic pressure goes this way, when it's cycling the ram, it oil gets forced into that groove and squeezes that against the rod so it can't bypass oil. So that's the buffer seal. You can see inside the buffer seal it also has a bit of wear on it where the rod has been sitting on it. These are a two part seal so you have a rubber outer ring that goes in first and then the plastic ring or polymer ring that goes in over the top. And this is also used to help hold back pressure.
So that there is the bearing which stops the rod from contacting the gland while it is in operation. A lot of different excavators out there will run a polymer or a plastic style wear band. Hitachi's run these metal cage wear bands. There is a polymer on top and then underneath that is a much softer material. So if they do end up wearing through it, it doesn't contact the cylinder gland and damage the rod. So it's actually done its job and stopped the rod from colliding with the gland. The gland is actually in really good condition. The seals were in really good condition. So we can reuse this. All I'm going to do is give it a good clean up and sandblast it to remove the paint. So the other parts I removed off the rod was an expansion ring and that goes underneath the cushion bearing and that is designed so when hydraulic oil gets in underneath them it expands and holds the choke in the center of the rod so it can then go inside the head and slow down the cylinder. So the expansion ring is in really good condition there is no reason for that to be damaged so I will reuse that because I don't believe the seal kits come with a new one and over the top of that is the choke also known as a cushion bearing and the cushion bearing is in good condition there is no reason to replace that. And then there's the piston. I am just gonna take those seals off so you can sort of see the extent of the damage on the piston. Oh. So that's our cylinder completely disassembled. I need to make a new piston, make a new barrel before I can fit the new seals and the bushings and reassemble it. But you'll have to stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. So today we're going to get started on rebuilding a cylinder for our exchange fleet. Yep. All right, ready? Yeah. Well, it's pretty munted, but it's it's not fucking munted. The next thing we need to do is get this fully set. Mm -hmm. Right, I so I have. Why is this being so painful? I don't know. So all I'll need to do is give the rod a polish. That sounds bad. <laughs> so all I'm going to need to do is polish up the rod. Just stop saying rod. Right. Right. So all I'm going to just and stop saying right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just not right, so any other starting but yeah, right, but how so. how you start it after that? Right, so that's... Oh, right, so... <laughs> right, so that's our cylinder... Oh, fuck! Oop. Come on, put the camera back up. Stop laughing, you make it take too long. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, my God. Can you go turn the power on? There's just bits falling off everywhere. I'm so distracted right now. Uh, goodbye, birds. Nope, they're not leaving. Ah, uh, far out. Having fun. They won't be. <laughs> Fuck off. Oh, they're not. There. There's a new one. <laughs> Drop it, homie. Hey. <laughs> Get it. Okay. And then when you're finished, just walk off and I'll pan down. But you'll have to stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. But you'll have to stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.